Uh, next up, we're going to go through um, basically modifying the grid. Um, and the question came up, how do you remove a connection if you've already, um, if you've already you know, made an, an accidental connection? So if I did something like that, which can happen. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's actually, there are a few ways of doing it. Um, the way that I typically like to do it is I'll right click that input and then I'll go to, oh, I need to move that over. Um, right click the input and I'll go to disconnect and it'll allow me to select which connection because you can have more than one on each input if you wanted um, which one to remove um, and if I just click that it'll remove it otherwise um, and this is the one I don't do as often so bear with me here yeah there you go um, control and you'll see that notice how it's probably hard for you guys over there to see but it's actually a red uh, wire icon next to my mouse um, and with a little minus sign above it. Um, that just means if I, if I drag backwards from there to there, it'll remove that connection. Control. And then click and drag across the same connection. Okay. Um, likewise, uh, if you make a mistake, like what I just did right there, um, I remove that connection. But if I say, oh, no, I wanted it, I can hit Control Z which is undo, or um, control Y to redo. You know, so those functions really st uh, still hold true here in the software. OK, so um, let's talk about the, the modification of the grid. Um, the grid is modified in a few dynamic ways. Um, I'm going to show you some static ways, and then a, or I'm going to show you a static way and a uh, dynamic way. And, um, these aren't the only ways of doing this, but uh, I don't like to give you too much information at once. So I'll kind of like over time, just kind of like throw in a different way of doing something. It's easier to cope with, I think, generally. OK, so um, you saw that double click menu to search, right? When I did that, by now you all memorize that because it's super useful. Um, this is not just a search function. It's also a shortcut function. So you can create things um, using this as long as you know the proper syntax to create it. So um, I, I also mentioned if you look at um, input up here, there's this thing called a number slider, and then there's a thing called a panel. right? There's a reason that those two items are the top two items in the input menu, because that is the most basic form of a singular or, or um, multiple static and dynamic numbers that you could really have. Um, namely, if I drop a number slider in, I can slide this back and forth and it creates a different number, right? Um, let me get rid of that though because I don't want to connect that one in. Likewise, if I create a panel and I double click inside and I type a number and hit enter, oh, sorry, not enter, don't ever hit enter, um, it creates a number. And there are some things you need to know about using this, which I'll show you in a bit, but that's basic, okay? So that double click menu to create a slider, right, where you can kind of just pull it back and forth, um, you can just type in a value like zero, uh, whoop, that's not a zero, zero less than 10, and that will create a slider from 0 to 10. However, it will create a slider of real numbers, or I'm sorry, integers. I always get those backwards. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, if you need decimals, OK, um, if you need decimals, all you need to do is take one of those values and you need to just add decimals to it. So I can say 0, 0.00 is less than 10, and it'll create a slider with two decimal places. See that? That's very, very important to know. Likewise, if you ever need to modify it afterwards, you can double click on that. And I won't describe this whole menu right now. I might in the future, but it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you need to modify it, you can switch back to whole numbers and you can go back to decimals and stuff like that. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want is a slider. Oh, one more thing. Uh, you can also start the slider at a certain number too, 
however useful that is, it's kind of up to you, but you can say zero is less than five is less than 10 as well. And that'll basically create a slider from zero to 10, but it'll start it at five. It's up to you if you want to use that. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I'm going to copy and paste four of these and use them to create my grid. So copy, uh, control C and then control V lets me just create some copies really fast. And then you can just drag them down. Zero, less than five, less than 10. You guys need me to hang up for a moment? So from, from here, um, the information that we're going to be passing through is, is really, it gets more dynamic. And you're going to be able to actually see it modified here in, in the top view. OK, so when we plug these in, right, you saw that you plug in the point to the P input, and it moves it in space. So that's cool. That's great. Um, but then we have uh, these sliders that are going to feed into the size x, which basically means the size of the cell in the x direction. And then we have um, size y. And then we have extent x, which means how many cells in the x direction. OK, so that's what these all are for. So we'll plug all four of them in. And you'll notice that it created um, basically a very large square grid because they're all values of 5 right now. But all of these can be modified. I can pull this to be um, smaller. I can make this larger. I can change the extent to be more or less. Um, additionally, I don't have to have separate sliders for every value. If I want a square grid, I can use the same slider for both. And if I, if I want to remove that connection, um, depending on the type of component it is, you can just override it with a new connection and it'll break all other connections. So if I need, um, let's, uh, yeah, let's make them square. If I need these to be square and I don't feel like reconstructing it with a square grid, all I need to do is take my size in the Y direction and override, or X direction and override it on the Y. So now I have the same value being plugged into the size in the x and the y direction. So theoretically, I could get rid of this. And similarly, the extent x and y, you don't have to have um, both of them if you just want the same number both ways. Um, but generally, you can just you know, take the same number if you wanted. So I'm going to move this to 4 and 4. And that's the grid we're going to operate on. Yes. Does that mean each box is two by two? Yes. Yeah. So each box here is three feet by three feet. Unless you're actually very good question. Um, you said three by three, which uh, does not imply any particular unit of measurement, right? Um, it is very important to know that Grasshopper borrows the units that your Rhino file is mapped in. So if you have feet up here, then this value of 3 equates to feet. But if you change this to inches, then this value of 3 means inches. OK? All right. <clears throat> so all right, I'm going to stop this video right here. And then I'm going to uh, show you how to, that was, oh. Uh, let me just kind of um, kind of bring the, the cycle back into it, okay? So that was the phase of constructing geometry. We constructed a grid, okay? So now we're going to move into deconstructing that grid, and then we're going to reconstruct circles on it. Kind of get how it works? Yeah. All right. <laughs>